But if we allow the oil companies to, to have the power which you say has come to them because we need the oil, it's a question of supply and demand. Yes. So if we approach this laissez-faire, as I think you would like us to, free of government intervention, right. free of all the force and the regulation and the controls which you abhor. Right. All right. Now we've got Mr. Gigantic Oil Baron saying $2.50 a barrel, a, a, a gallon. Now here's what happens. The guy, the blue collar guy who's trying to make a living and feed his kids can't buy gas for his truck, can't possibly survive in the free marketplace, and suddenly he's on welfare and he's got to go for a handout, another feature of government that you abhor. You can't have it both ways. But all this is economic fallacies. To begin with, nobody in a free society, now we're talking about the free market, yeah. in which the government doesn't interfere, nobody can become a monopolist. All monopolies are created by a special privilege for government. It's only by an act of government that you can keep competitors out of your field. Therefore, you couldn't become that kind of monopoly. The power you hold as an industrialist is not the power to use force. It's the power of producing something of value. That people want. And it's the people who literally control you because Every purchase is a vote in the favor of some businessmen and, in a way, against others. It's the public who decides what they want to buy and what they pass up. If, using your examples, you became this powerful tycoon economically, but you cannot force anybody to deal with you and you cannot force competitors out of your field, then every smaller man would be in that field because you would have established a price way above the market. You might last a month if that. So in other words, if I tried to be Mr. Big and charge outrageously high prices for, you for gasoline, broke. I would go broke in your view because in your leave them alone and let competition handle it approach to civilization, somebody with a smarter, with a better mousetrap Pardon my mixed metaphor. No, that's a very good one. All right. Would come along and undercut me. That's right. Sell at a cheaper price. But she isn't just my view. You know what I'll do? I'll buy him up the minute I see this bird. I'll buy him. I'll own him and on Tuesday. And where will you get your money when you're I'm not already allowed? already holding them up for $2.50 a gallon. But they're not paying you. You say they're all going out well, of business. They've got to get to work. We're married to a petroleum uh, civilization. All right. no this has been done, you know. It isn't incidentally just my view. That is history. There are people who have tried okay. to corner the market repeatedly, right. and the result was that they went broke. Let, let me see if I understand you now. How do you see if this has got it? You're saying, in effect, that the oil companies have this power because we gave it to them. We gave it to them with our large cars that need a lot of gasoline. We gave, them, we gave it to them with, with our wasteful practices of energy. We have such a tremendous demand and need and reliance on oil that we, in effect, have given the people who make, who produce the oil, the power over us. No. <laughs> tell me, tell me how, where that's wrong. Because the oil producers are not the only people whom we patronize and not the only people who supply a need. The, even if, which I say if, it never happens, but let's suppose one oil man cornered the market he has competition from every other industry who produce other things which we need. Therefore, we cannot give all the power to one company, even if in a given field we patronize only that company. That company is competing with every other producer. And the moment you charge too much and somebody can give us the same product mm -hmm. uh, at a lower price, he'll you right. out of business.